Hello, everybody. Okay. Welcome tonight to RWR's um, book club. And tonight, as Charmaine's holding up, it's The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn, which is actually a 2015 um, Edgar Award winner alongside uh, Stephen King. Um, and, and it's a short story. So it's one of her brilliant short stories. Um, it's uh, very well thought of as a tense and twisty thriller, which I think most people will agree. It's got lots of interesting things in it. Um, so we've got anybody want to have uh, talk about a little bit about, I've got some questions like um, if you want to talk. So, okay, first question, what captured you the most about this story or what was your favourite line that captured you? Okay, so my favourite okay. line, my favourite line was, I didn't stop giving hand jobs because it wasn't good. At, I wasn't good at it. I stopped giving hand jobs because I was the best at it. Now, that to me is like, oh, I've got to read the rest of this. <laughs> yeah. why, why did she well, give up if she was the best at it? But it was, was and, quite a, an amazing opening line. Wasn't it? Yeah, and it in was. The, in the end, it had nothing to do with the story, really, oh. a little bit, but. It was just like drag you in the story. I, I really love that. Yes, Charmaine? Well, mine is getting towards the other end of the story. So um, my one is more um, towards the end here where she says, I had convinced so many people of so many things over my life, but this would be my greatest feat, convincing myself what I was doing was reasonable, not decent but reasonable. <laughs> yeah, so that's perfect my favourite. perfect anti-hero. That's yours that's too, Robert? That's my favourite line too. Mm. Yeah. I really, I think that she's really pulled out a lot of people's um, thoughts and, and what would you say in your own life about that stuff and how would you? You know, has anybody else got a favourite line that they remember? Nope. Who's in the background there? <laughs> Is that a Star oh, Wars? Yeah, yeah, I think it's a Star Wars. Yeah, we have Star Wars in the back. Um, oh, yeah, gosh. Luke Skywalker's just come to check in. He does a bit of light reading in between his missions. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she could. You probably missed it. We were talking about your Star Man. That's Star Wars Man in the background. Star Wars Man. <laughs> You're muted. Emma. You're muted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my stormtrooper Han. Stormtrooper. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Han Solo. Sorry. Um, yeah. Another one. It's hard I've to always, see. always had a bit of a thing for Han in the stormtrooper outfit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry, I had to do um, good night. <laughs> Did you have a favourite line in the book? Um, I love the opening as well. Mm. I think it's it was absolutely brilliant. It made me laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And to, then it goes, yeah, I, I was gobsmacked, to be honest, when I read it. And I thought, yeah. what are they called? What's that called, Charmaine? Um, the book? The book? Yeah, yeah but yeah, there's yeah. an actual name for it when it's a, a hook first line. Opening line? In Opening mem hook. Yeah, no, there's another word. But anyway, I, if I think of it, I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> so my next question what twists didn't you see coming? Because there was a few. It went back a, and forth a lot. Yeah, a, a lot. Like I'm, I'm going to jump back to the first line just for oh, a yeah, sec because yeah, yeah, I do, on. and then and then I'll let you go on with that. Um, yeah. I do think that it's really such a good example of one type of opening line you can use. So not every story will want this type of opening line, but this mm. is that shock value mm -hmm. opening line where you want to say something that both confuses the reader a little bit mm. and surprises them so that they need to read a couple of more sentences because then that will explain what they're talking about. Mm. So um, that's a really good way to start a story. There are other ways you can start a story too, like you start with mystery, intrigue. You can mm. start with, um, yeah, asking a question is a great way to start and that brings the reader into because this one she does talk to directly to the reader a fair bit so she mm. could bring the reader straight in you can um start with a bit of dialogue just to get things happening and, and introduce a character so there's a lot of really good ways to get impact on that first line and she's chosen shock value and I really 
quite like that. Oh, but sorry, that. back to your twists and turns. No, that's all right. I was trying to find what that word was because I wrote it in our for, um, on our retreat page and I can't think of it. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so what twists didn't you see coming? I, I've, I've got one. <laughs> I, I, I think I, I guessed a few along the way. Um, like another question I suppose we could tag in with that is uh, what rises and falls didn't, oh, where is it? I would what say was one of the like? twists. Like? There's yep. one twist there. I'm not sure if I still see it. Like I, I am a bit confused. So I just I think I should probably say now to everyone at home, if you're listening to us talk about this book, this which is actually a, a novella, so it's a short story, then you're right, you've either already read it Mm-hmm. Or are you happy to read it with spoilers? Because obviously the things we say are going to mm-hmm. spoil it for you. So if you think, wow, this sounds good already, turn off, go and read it, and come mm-hmm. back and listen to what we've got to say about it. Because what I'm about to say will spoil some stuff. Yeah. So mm-hmm. what I really liked is there's that twist of the wife, did she know, didn't she know? And you're like, oh, she knew who she was dealing with. And then when I get to the end, I'm still not sure now because I'm like, wait, is the boy telling the truth about her not knowing or does she know and he's in on it too because he's got his own agenda and so now I'm like it could go either way yeah there's one twist there I'm not even still not sure about (laughs) yeah well I didn't that's that's my favorite one too yours Yeah. Yeah. yeah I didn't see the ending twist come no that one blew my mind I'm like it could, have, it could have finished where she finished it at, at, at the house. Yeah. But then mm-hmm. she put a, an extra knife in there and turned it and said, here you yeah. go, have this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what, without what giving a, too much work. What a great character arc. She goes from con yeah. artist to being conned. Yes, mm. exactly. Yeah. But then yeah. right at the end to accepting it and saying, well, I'm getting back into being a con artist now. I've got my offside. I'm going to do this. So... She's really um, what you know, a, such a great anti-hero. There's, mm. there's not yeah. a nice character in this story. Mm. Like mm. the husband's except, a cheat. Yeah. Except, yeah, not except a nice for character. the little boy that was locked in the room that we never got to meet. Yeah, so we, he doesn't really count. He's mm. he had less time than the cat. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's he there for flavor. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally agree. It was, uh, I, I believe that the ending tied with the beginning and that's sort of what we tried to do in our own writing as well. Um, she mm. she was wrapped up in her mother's con. She got out of that, became her own con artist and then got wrapped up in another con. Yes, yeah. and uh, now she's yeah. going to continue it. Yeah. yeah, as a mother. As a mother, yep. yeah. yeah. Mm. So it's like yeah. tying the front with the end. Yeah, I really yeah. liked that, yeah. That, and that's another thing we try to do a lot too is try to t- tie in the beginning with the end. Not that oh, yeah. it's right at the beginning, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I also yeah. like the bits where she um, talked to the reader that she obviously felt like she was quite a good judge of character, character <laughs> and she had everybody sussed. And yeah. then, yeah, that leads into the fact that, yeah, and and I like that we're, we were left as the reader with that well what was what was the you know what was the con and Mm. (laughs) yeah and who is the best con artist because I'm not sure still (laughs) yeah well I I think there are two peas in a pod to be mm -hmm. honest I wanted to know what was gonna happen next Mm. Mm. and that's really what you know you want to doing a story mm, make a reader yeah. keep reading to find out yeah. did it yeah. scare you did it scare anybody did the story gave, scare anybody it gave me a really nasty feeling yeah. about yeah. the house yeah. and as soon as she arrived at the house for the first time and the way she describes looking mm. up at it there's not many kind of horror writing stories I've read that have really made me go Mm, this isn't right I don't (laughs) like this and it did get to me and actually I have to say I was kind of disappointed it didn't continue with that 
Mm, because yeah. I really was enjoying that as a short horror and the little boy was like it was Damon. it was creepy yeah mm. I um, was I quite liked that it turned like it turned out there's probably nothing wrong with the house at all because <laughs> I liked that I feel like she was making a commentary on the charlatans that do a lot of that clairvoyant stuff to scam people yeah and so she's saying you know and there's sometimes when there will be some people like that you show them the trick, you show them this is a scam. See, this is how we did it. Mm. And they will still hang on to, yeah, but that's because you're a little bit psychic that you're able to do that. And they're like, no, 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 we tricked you. I've, I've seen videos where they have um, people go up to do a clairvoyant trick on somebody and then afterwards ask them, oh, do you know how I did that? And they say, oh, it's because you're so connected. And they say, well, no, actually, this is how I do it. It's a trick. It's, it's something in the industry that people use as a trick and mm. this is how I do it. And they'll go, yeah, but you knew everything. Yeah, I'm telling you how I knew. It's a trick. And, yeah, um, yeah. and the people, won't, even when they're being told, won't accept it because mm. they want to believe so bad. And so I, I feel like she was, she, I feel like she did some investigating into that before she wrote did, this. In yeah. saying that, do you actually think that, what was the woman's name? Um, Susan. Do you think that she, in the end, I know that she was scamming her back, but do you think in the end? Oh, Chris has frozen up. Uh -oh. She's got something really important to say and we're really forward <laughs> to wait for it now. In the end, and this is how you use suspense in writing. You, you, you sort of dangle it a little bit and then you pause and you wait a bit I remember on Twitter once there's um, the guy who posts about the storms coming all the time and he said oh emergency urgent everybody watch out huge storm coming in the areas of and the tweet finished and I waited and I waited and I, and then I just tweeted I just responded this is a great use of suspense and um, and then he got back on he said oh his daughter had turned up with groceries and he had to go out and help her <laughs> so um, yeah <laughs> So um, Chris is oh, obviously going to log out and log back in. So that's all right. We'll hear about that. Um, so <laughs> I think Chris is asking about if we think that the mother was clued into this. Because at the end, I couldn't tell if she knew any of it. I didn't know if she was initially, yes, she picked her because she knew, or if it was all the boy setting her up to pick her. I don't know. No. No, I don't know. I, yeah. But I think that's well, a bit about it. Mm, yeah. You know, like yeah, you don't, I don't know. Like in life, you don't know for certain yeah. people's intentions. Yeah. So yeah. I thought that was yeah, clever, really not clever revealing all the cards. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know if the mother was actually legitimately scared of the house or if that was an act. Mm. But I know that I do know the boy was a scammer. I get that. And that he set all that up. Yeah. But I um, have no idea if the mother was in on it or not. Or, I mean, and things yeah, he says so. about, yeah, about that she was going to kill them. Like, I don't think that would have been true because that seems very extreme. <laughs> oh, I mean, it could have been. Could have been. Definitely could have been. Well, she said, uh, he, the boy said, um, well, said was to make the father feel guilt. That was his explanation, wasn't it? To, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I yeah. I I was very torn as to which which way it was going. As a fantasy writer, I kind of wanted the angels at the front of Gargoyles. the house to mm. to blink or come alive in some mm. way. Mm. So, I agree I, with you. Yeah. I agree with you. Totally. I thought, oh my gosh, something's gonna go on. Well what did mm. everybody think of the analogy they use with the blood on the wall, dripping down the wall? You know, yeah. that comes back from Amityville horror. Makes me think of the shining mm. as well. Yeah, yeah. shining mm. as well. Yeah my gosh. I thought oh yeah she's touching bringing in a little bit of those horror things to get us going yeah. you know I was but really it's tropes that um horror um readers would want yeah. too because they they'd enjoy those and I you agree. know you don't yeah. then need to explain too much about it mm. you just mm. have that 
there. But the, yeah. the setting was amazing. And, I mean, she picked the right type of home. Mm. So I always like it when the setting um, or the house becomes the character. Mm. Um, yeah. Pamela no. Jukes would probably have a lot to say about <laughs> the setting and, and the architecture and mm. what features mm. cause yeah. unease in the mm. reader and what yeah. to explore. I think... Um, Robert nailed it with the gargoyles, angels on the mm. front of the house. That sort of set the scene for horror up. Mm. You know, it's like and, a modern gothic. Right. Um, yeah. I think the horror side of it was meant to be a little bit of misdirection so that you'd mm. see those things and think, oh, this is going to be, there's mm. going to be some supernatural horror here yeah. because it's giving me these clues. Yeah. Um, and then it's like scammed you because it's all about scammers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was it's a, a bit like different... a it's a bit like a magic trick than mm. misdirection, really. Mm. No, yeah. true. Because yeah. we, she was there was a lot of different settings in the story, to be honest. There was the setting with her mother in, in her life when she was younger, then we go back to where she worked as a sex worker and then we go to where she became a, a psychic yeah. and then into the house. Which, which was the same place where she worked as a yeah, sex worker. It was, it so was. it was that little sort of thing that, oh, well, this is kind of the same thing. We're, we're, all, we're all tricking you into giving out, we're doing tricks to get your, our, our money out of you. Yeah, so yeah. whether it's, you know, hand jobs or whether it's, you know, reading your future. Future, <laughs> same con job sort of yeah. in different ways. Yeah, but it's well, the front I, of the shop and at the back of the shop. You yeah, know. true. Yeah, yeah. very. Was, and misdirection, and if it, like mis, what yeah. said, misdirection. Yeah, mm. it was more because they said um, she said as well it was kept very kind of separate. You know, because yes. <laughs> somebody coming in to have their fortune told didn't want to think what was you know how happening many, in the back. Happening at the back. Yeah. Mm. Gosh, <laughs> I also liked the way that they tied in her client from the hand from the hand job um with the books yeah. and mm. then yeah. going into the house and being put in the library yeah where inevitably we find out that's where the books came from mm. yeah and fair and that was then she realized you know oh my god Basically, well, I think Miles came in and might have told her as well, didn't he? Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I was like, waiting. Notice. Have you it's... noticed the books? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, and it took her a while. Things. She's all like, oh, "I feel so clever because I've read a lot of these books." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's good foreshadowing. Like, yes, yes. yeah, you, it's just so subtle. And but yeah, and the yeah. business card, it, and it all comes back. Who has? Mm-hmm. Who's? I don't know any sex workers that have business cards. Mind you, I don't know many, but <laughs> how many do you know? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, zero actually. <laughs> but yeah, interesting. You'd come over and there'd be one sitting in the book. Isn't that how Susan found it? She found out. But I think the business card wasn't the business card for the clairvoyant. Oh, I mean, it wouldn't it, have said on there it? what you do. Yeah. yeah. And oh. she came to check for herself because yeah. she was suspicious. Or so he says, because we don't even know if that's true or if she we actually never came met him. to see the clairvoyant mm. because she's scared her house is being haunted. I, I still am not sure about Susan and, and what her role in it was. Well, we didn't get to meet him either, really. I mean, he was no. in the story for a second, yeah. about as much as the other son that was locked up in the room and the cat. Mm. Yeah, and she tried to make him very likable. Like she kept mm. saying, oh, yeah, and we'd chat and he'd giggle and stuff. He he's paying someone to give him hand jobs behind behind his wife's back. So let's yeah. let's be honest, he's not the most likable person. <laughs> no. But have a think about it. He's a character that's all through the book, mm-hmm. and we didn't even get to meet him. Yeah. Mm. How interesting mm. is that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. She and I'm glad. So well. I'm so glad because I was a little bit worried towards the end that it was going to end with her plan to go and meet up with the father and I'm so uh, glad that's not even a consideration even, for yeah. her because mm. I'm I'm really tired of that kind of arch that the best yeah. thing the woman can get out of this story is to get the man yeah. uh, so I'm really cliche, glad, isn't it? Yeah. yeah neither of them got him yeah yeah, yeah. 
or yeah. or maybe neither of them deserve to be stuck with him too. So yeah, that's true too. I wouldn't want to be stuck with a person like that, to be honest. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I've got to be honest. I read this book late. This story, well, late one night because I was really interested in learning and reading um, Edgar Winner's stories oh, and it yeah. scared the living daylights out of me so I could only read half of it and I had to read the next half in the morning yeah. <laughs> that was, that scared me. and I love horror I love that stuff it really yeah. Yeah. the way she wrote it was really grungy and anyway scary who thought the pot of water was going to end up on her head that was well done too mm, well yeah. written in I thought she was going to end up with a pot of water on her head I'm still not sure if the poor cat had its tail cut off <laughs> oh, no. I'm actually yeah. not sure. I thought no. I want to go and check out that cat. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't a dog. Mm. Oh, when yeah. the cat, walked, I wouldn't have finished it. Yeah. <laughs> when the cat walked past, and she, well, in my, I, it was a while ago. I read it now, but I, in my memory, the cat walked past, and she said, "Oh yeah, look at you know, he even cut." And I was like, "The cat seems." I didn't think the cat would walk past if it had just had its tail cut off. I did yeah. think. And it was fine. Mm, it's, uh, but then this boy said something later that uh, that made me think, say, wait, um, maybe he did cut it off. Oh, he was yeah. so creepy. Yeah. Mm. He was like creepy like kid. Him. I like him. <laughs> Mate, I felt like he, need, they, he, he needed to be on all fours, you know, like a, a, a demon almost. He was very demon. Yeah, demonic. Yeah. I, yeah. I yeah. portrayed him well. well done. Yeah. yeah. I think he was very much meant to be a very young sociopath, but yeah. everything is just about my needs, my wants. Yeah. Don't really care. Sounds like his father. But extremely intelligent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, and I did find that word in media is. Oh, starting oh, in the action? action? Yeah. Yeah. Starting yeah. at the beginning. Um, but is it action? It's not really capture that. I don't know if I would call that, that in media res because in media res is like you're right in. It would have been her in the house mm. with, yeah. with stuff happening and her we saying, "Oh, there's ghosts," and the then she story, goes yeah. back and tells us how yeah. she gets there. Yeah. yeah, but I mean that is a, also an excellent way to start, and that's probably mm. one of my favourite ways mm. yeah. to have a story start is in media res when mm. you start not at the start of the problem. But right in the middle of it, and we have to try and figure out how we got to this problem. And short mm. stories, that's a brilliant way to start. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Sorry, I just I found it while I got blocked off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, so what story changes did you like? Like one of mine was I enjoyed and I... <laughs> And I found it difficult to understand how she could, but I suppose in thinking of her as a con man person was going from a sex worker to a psychic. For me, that was like two totally different things. I didn't, it, when I first read it, I went, what? Um, but I suppose like we were just been talking about, it is a, a con away in, yeah. in both situations. So that was one of mine. And another one was doubting herself at the house. Like she doubted. She yeah. got to a point at one po thing that she thought she was actually psychic mm. because the things yeah. that were coming true, she thought the place was haunted, you know. So she yeah. ended up doubting herself, which I thought the writer, Gillian Flynn, did a really good job on was making her doubt herself in that situation because she was a fairly positive person. She thought yeah. she knew everything and knew how to do everything and then she got to the point where she was scared witless. Because she thought it was real now. She thought, yeah. I can deal with it when it's fake. And then when yeah. she thought it was real, she was like, oh, I, I think you need someone else, which I did like. They, they used that moment. They talk about you need to have a moment very early on in the story, and it doesn't really come that early, where they save the cat and save the cat. It's where your protagonist does something good so that we see that they're a good person. And for some reason, she manages to, there you go, she manages <laughs> to, cheat, to cheat that because yeah. she doesn't do that until about a third of the way in the novel yeah. where she starts to think it's real and she shows compassion for Susan, mm. the woman who she's sleeping, been, well, has been servicing her husband. She, <laughs> uh, she actually shows compassion and mm. she becomes honest for a moment and she says, look, I can't actually help you with this problem. You need help. This is mm. really scary. Something really bad is happening in this house and you need a professional 
I suggest you go and get someone because I'm not qualified to help. Mm. And it's at that point we see a show for the first time, Compassion for Someone, um, which Save the Cat says you've really got to do that on the first page. But, um, you know, Gillian Flynn says, nah. (laughs) (laughs) That's still a way in there. Yeah. 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 She, she even got to the point where she said she wanted to give her money back. Yeah, yeah. And money for her was her be all and end all of life. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah. I, really, so um, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, so that was um, very interesting. So her character arc is almost like not being a very honest person, accidentally being a little bit honest, but then getting back to your true self mm, of not yeah. being honest at the end. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? So you get a yeah. story arc, a really good story arc and a really good character arc. Actually, yeah. in, in a few of the actors, I think – that Miles, which is the the creepy fella, I think his character was level. I don't think he moved anywhere, which is sort of what you want anyway in, in some characters. They don't have the arc. Um, I don't know. Who, what is everybody thinking about Susan? Do you think there was a character arc in her story? I don't know. Mm. Mm. Just sort don't know of. how much you knew, yeah? Mm. I, I think that she started off with a plan to get back at this mm. girl and yeah, she saw a way out of some stuff. And in the end, she ended up getting what she wanted the miles out of her house, mm. you know, but I don't think we saw an arc in her either. Mm. I think the only arc was actually, does anybody know the, the POV's name? Because I looked, tried looking it up. I tried finding her name. I couldn't. Did she actually mention no the protagonist's name? No, isn't um, that interesting? And I had to think for yeah. a moment, but they oh. do not because in the blurb on the back they would use her name, but it's just a young woman. Yeah, because I well, looked. She had at a it. nickname. Her boss gave her a nickname. Nerdy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but she never mentions her name because I had oh. another listen through it and I went. This is really unusual. We've got a POV through the whole story from beginning to end and we don't know who it is. No. <laughs> it's something that we're taught as writers is that we need to introduce all of our characters. Yeah. I even well, tried Googling it. Got I told find. that, you know, even the cat deserves a name. Yeah. Like you should name <laughs> all your characters, but, you know. It's another mystery. She, yeah, she broke a lot of rules. Another rule, yeah. <laughs> and it worked, but she got away with it. And we still felt sympathy for her. I wonder if that's why George R. Martin put it here, the story in the Rogues anthology, because it started off in oh, Rogues rogue, as, yeah. yeah, as What Do You Do was the story. It first was published as What Do You Do yeah. in the George R. R. Martin Rogues anthology. And there's some amazing stories in there, just if you want to listen to some more. And then later on, it was published as The Grown Up that she published as a single yeah. short story. Um, but yeah, and he's another one. George R. R. Martin's another one who loves to break rules. You know, he followed the hero's journey to the T for years and years and years and years and then decided that was it. He was going to break the rules. And maybe that's why he liked it. And maybe mm-hmm. something like that is why she won an award. Mm. which is sort of why mm. we started this little short story winners thing to try and figure out why and how come and what's the difference between their writing and our writing and what can we do or infiltrate or put into our writing to, to get to that stage. Yeah, but you still have to learn the rules to be able oh, to break them. To break them, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah she knew the tropes and expectations to set up for us before she switched it. Mm. 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 But you probably missed out, Chris, on because you heard it on audio, mm. you missed out all the um, punctuation things that she used. Yeah, so she probably. used the round brackets for authorial intrusion to, to oh. add humorous side notes, and you wouldn't have seen that no, because you were hearing it. So it's interesting. It'd be interesting to see how they did that, if they changed to a higher tone when when it was in brackets the or, or whether yeah the person the narrator was brilliant um yeah it'd be interesting i'd like to do that side by side book and and 
and audio and just mm-hmm. see actually to that actually is a good idea we might do that <laughs> i might borrow the book off you charmaine and, yeah, and do the audio at the same time yeah. it's really um, good and i'm going to also say i really enjoy i actually enjoy a lot of Gillian flynn's books mm. i've read i think all of them mm. but um i really quite like every now and then getting something that is this short it just feels like you accomplished something yeah. in a very busy life and a busy week to go oh i'm finished Mm. after well, a night you know it yeah. didn't feel like a short story by the time you got to the mm. end of it it felt like you well, it's bordering on novella size mm. yeah. actually yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well it was great i didn't think that it's i missed it length. i liked it yeah. i like the length i approve yeah. of the length and i approve <laughs> of the number of words <laughs> <laughs> really? important words i think they're all important words to be honest i don't I can't as somebody who goes through and looks at stories and and well does little bits of editing and stuff like that and critiquing, I don't think there's anything in there that I would take out. I think it was all important. Mm. You know, every single part that she put in there was important because the part about her and her mother brought up her insecurities and why she didn't became who she was. So I think that was important. Um then she got into the trade she got into because she wanted to make money, mm. you know, and that was important. And then becoming a psychic because that was important because it led on to the house of horrors. Um, so everything that was in that book was important. I wouldn't take anything out. I really enjoyed it. Mm. Yeah. But maybe go back to it and look at it from even yeah. the punctuation because she I uses Collins, Collins to um, introduce dialogue. Mm. isn't that interesting instead of the comma yeah so that's what I picked up and I thought that's interesting and I wonder why she did that and she did I wonder that. if we could write to her and ask her yeah. <laughs> excuse yeah. me Gillian we're just looking at your book and wondering why mm. <laughs> she might write back so, to us um are you Love living where she's using action as a dialogue tag instead of he said she said no, uh, um, oh, I'd have to find it now. But she, I yeah. know, I made it because when she uses myself. like he said, she said, she yes. uses a comma. But yeah. when she, um, but most of the time she doesn't use that, and I prefer that to. I prefer Bible hardly text. ever to say he said, she said. Yes. I prefer someone to do something instead. Yeah. yeah. But then you yeah. use a full stop instead of a comma, and she yes. uses the the colon. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and she also used a lot of m dashes to emphasize sentences. Mm, I'm seeing that a lot more in books these days. I think it's quite appropriate rather than putting brackets in in the middle of a sentence. Mm. Yeah. Um, I've seen that a lot, but I think I like the M dashes. And what we're talking about as M dashes is the two little hyphens together. And when you type them on your computer, it joins them together as a longer dash. Yeah. So it becomes those in-betweeny words, in-between sentences that you sometimes do which you you use them you do use them a lot in columns in um non-fiction it's unusual Mm. to see it in fiction so i know when i worked Mm. for department of environment we would use them a lot in documents that would be published like gazettals and so forth do you think that m dashing all over the place Mm. (laughs) yeah dashing yeah i'd like to see it come in a bit more because i think it looks neater I think people get the idea of what it is easier. And I don't I, think it takes you out of the story. I think it has to, only if it's something that needs to be there because I don't oh, agree of course. With yes. of course. Uh, in short stories. I prefer if you can use a comma, just mm-hmm. to use a little aside mm. with a comma will do the job mm. and it's less visually noticeable. So it's not yes. like a flashing sign at you. Mm-hmm. But um, if I had to pick between com- um, brackets and M dashes, I would pick an M dash. Mm. Um, I've usually only used those to show when your dialogue's getting cut off. Mm. You use yeah, that's oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. Because you can reword a sentence. You don't have to have that in the middle. You can reword yeah. the sentence and make it fit properly. So uh, I suppose it just depends. Yeah. Depends. Um, see, you, see you next time. Um, see you next okay, time, Robert. Robert. Thanks we'll for joining us. Time. Yep. Okay. And um, any last comments you want to make on this story, Christine, and we will end our recording part. 
Um, well, just want to say thank you for everybody for coming tonight and having reading the book because I think that it's something that uh, we can do a lot more of reading some award-winning short stories. And thank you, Charmaine, for holding the book up the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll make sure everyone knows. Grab a copy. And Gina um, and yeah. Emma for coming along and, and Robert, who just left. Thank yep. you very much for turning up and, and helping everybody who's going to be listening to this later on. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. So I'll end the recording now. <laughs>